Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the 13th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollitt. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today we are told something about being disciples of Jesus in the gospel. For the times perhaps we notice we have failed to be faithful in our discipleship, let's ask the Lord now for mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You were seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, where you intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on Amen. earth peace, peace to people of goodwill. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. In those days, the Lord said to Elijah, Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of abel Mehola, you shall anoint to be a prophet in your place. So he departed from there and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen before him, and he was with the twelve. Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him, and he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. And he said to him, Go back again, for what have I done to you? And he returned from following him, and he took the yoke of oxen and slew them, and boiled their flesh with the yokes of the oxen, and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he rose and went after Elijah and ministered to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It is you, O Lord, who are my portion. It is, it is you, O Lord, Lord, who are my portion. Preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. O Lord, it is you who are my portion and cup. You yourself who secure my lot. It is you, you O Lord, Lord, who are, are my, my portion. portion. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel, who even at night directs my heart. I keep the Lord before me always. With him at my right hand, I shall not be moved. It, it is, is you, O Lord, Lord, who are my portion. portion. 
And so my heart rejoices and my soul is glad. Even my flesh shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to hell, nor let your Holy One see corruption. It is, it is you, you, O Lord, Lord who are my, my portion. You will show me the path of life, the fullness of joy in your presence. At your right hand, bliss forever. It is, it is you, O Lord, Lord, who are my portion. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand fast, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For you were called to freedom. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love be servants of one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you are not consumed by one another. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to prevent you from doing what you would. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O when the days drew near for Jesus to be received up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers ahead of him, who went and entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. But the people would not receive him, because his face was set towards Jerusalem. And when his disciples, James and John, saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to bid fire come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. And they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, a man said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. But he said to him, Leave the dead to bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There is a question that every Christian must surely ask themselves at some point on their journey of faith. And that question is simply, how do I, in my own context, in my life, live my discipleship of Jesus? If we're not asking this question at some point, then we are not really living as disciples of Jesus. You see, because discipleship is not simply about making sure that you tick all the right boxes, that you obey the laws, which there is a tendency to believe, but rather it is a lived experience. 
discipleship of Jesus is not simply just an intellectual assent or a belief that we hold within our minds. It is supposed to be a living relationship, which means that it guides and directs the way that we choose to live our lives. Notice a few things in the gospel text we heard this morning. First, we're told that Jesus is going along the road. He is on a journey. And the theme of journey is an important one. The Greek word poriuamai is used often in Luke's gospel. It is the journey that Jesus is making. It is the journey that those around him are making. It is the journey of the gospel of the good news as it moves from Jerusalem later on into the whole known world of that time. Discipleship is something that we live and practice along the road of life, on the ordinary journey of life. It is not something extraordinary. In other words, it is something that we are invited to do every day. The word Jerusalem is used. We know that Jerusalem is the place where Jesus suffers and dies. And so it is Jerusalem that the faithfulness of Jesus, the faithfulness of his own life, is seen in the fullest way. He is faithful to who he is. He is faithful to his vocation, if one wants to call it that. He is faithful to his existence. He goes resolutely, he goes freely to Jerusalem. It is the place of faithfulness. And therefore, on our own journey of life, on our own journey of faith, we are called to the same faithfulness as Jesus as we live out our discipleship. I want to invite you to consider three ways of living this discipleship today. The things that we need to do, perhaps the invitation to us, if we are to follow Jesus. And all of these come out of that gospel text we have heard. Notice, first of all, we are told about the lifestyle of Jesus. There is a freedom. Jesus goes where he is called. He's not certain as to what will happen to him. And so too with us. We hear about that freedom as well in the first reading, the freedom of the call of Elisha. We hear Paul grappling with the idea of freedom. We are to be free of the things that hold us back if we are going to make the journey of discipleship as best as we can. You know, we live in a consumerist society where we are always kind of told to stockpile, to have more. If I go to the shop to buy one, well, let me buy two because, you know, I may just need the other one. But the way of discipleship is not a way of stockpiling. The way of discipleship is a way that calls us to letting go and to freedom. Letting go to those things that we hold within us, but also letting go of the material things that can constrain us. And that's what Jesus is able to do. It might be for us a good exercise to look at all the bits and pieces that we own, the material things that we have, and ask ourselves, A, do I need this all? And B, is it helping me to make my journey of discipleship well? The gospel hints that all we need is to trust that God is journeying with us. And all the other bits and pieces should be secondary. Notice as well, the second invitation is to see the mission, the bigger goal, so to speak, of what is going on, the bigger picture. 
Jesus is inviting those whom he says, follow me to, to go and to share the good news. Not the rules, which sometimes can be bad news, but the good news of Jesus himself. And that good news is to help others to come to a relationship with Jesus. Help others to move into that space of a personal relationship with Jesus. Very often, perhaps in our church communities, we tend to sit on the fence between good news and bad news. Very often, perhaps, people don't feel that they are being invited into a personal relationship with Jesus, but rather into a set of laws and rules. It is quite clear that the Lord is inviting us into a relationship with him. And that's the good news. When we are, through our own lives, able to witness that relationship that we have with the Lord to others, others too are encouraged into a personal relationship with Jesus. And notice a third thing. Discipleship is now. It's not something for the future. It's not something that we're waiting to happen. Jesus says, and it seems quite callous, don't go back and bury the dead. Don't go home and say goodbye, but rather follow me. Metaphoric, perhaps, saying to us that our discipleship is not something that we wait for but is something that we put into practice right now, that it's something we should be doing already. Every moment of our lives, we should be seeking to find ways of being good news to ourselves and to others. St. Paul, in that second reading to the Galatians, speaks about what true freedom is. And he introduces a dichotomy between the body and the spirit, one which the Christian church has struggled with right from the beginning. But notice what Paul is really saying. Let's not get caught up in the body-spirit uh, tension, which normally always goes down a sexual route. Notice what Paul is really saying. Paul is saying that our discipleship of Jesus is what leads us to authentic freedom. And the beginning of that freedom is maybe to take up those invitations which are put before us today, to check out our lifestyle. What do we really need? To be willing to share the good news with others and invite them into that personal relationship with Jesus and it is something that we do now. It is something that we are called to do in the very moment where we find ourselves every day. Not something we wait for or something that we only do in certain situations, but discipleship is simply a way of life. Let's pray today as we celebrate this Eucharist that we would deepen our discipleship of Jesus by taking up the challenge of the invitations that this gospel puts before us today. Let's pray together now the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father oh, Almighty, yes. Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The Lord has spoken to us through the scriptures, and we respond to God's word now by bringing our needs and the needs of our world to the Lord. For Christians, that we may all follow Christ with conviction and live our discipleship in concrete ways, serving others as Jesus himself did. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For world leaders, that they would embrace non-violent ways of dealing with the inevitable conflicts that are part of human life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us for all who have abandoned the Christian community, for all who have left the community of the church, that they may find their way back to Christ and that we would welcome them with love and sincerity. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all of us gathered to pray together today, that by our lifestyles and witness, we will bring the good news of our faith to others. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who are marginalized in our church and society, that we would invite them, by our love and concern, to move from marginalization and into the community of Jesus' disciples. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who have died, that all who have died, especially those we have loved, may rest in God's peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord our God, we bring these prayers before you, praying that you help us to become faithful disciples of Jesus Christ, your Son, through whom we make these and all our prayers. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth, work of our human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God for Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of our human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God, for us get to receive us and please the sacrifice we offer with humble and contrite hearts. Wash away our iniquities. Cleanse us of all our sin. Let's pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice and the sacrifice and efforts of our lives may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Creator. May the Lord accept the sacrifice with your hands. For the praise and the glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Lord of heaven and earth, through Christ our Lord. For by your word you created the world and you govern all things in harmony. You gave us the same word made flesh as mediator, and he has spoken your words to us and called us to follow him. He is the way that leads us to you, the truth that sets us free, the life that fills us with gladness. Through your Son you gather men and women whom you made for the glory of your name into one family, redeemed by the blood of his cross and signed with the seal of the Spirit. Therefore now and for ages unending, with all the angels, we proclaim your glory, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. 
Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Son and Baha'is, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Son in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when, as once for the disciples and so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the cup of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life through your Spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son, and confirm us in a bond of communion together with Francis our Pope and Bhutti our Bishop, with all other bishops, with priests and deacons, and with your entire people. Granted all the faithful of the Church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the Gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and their hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph her spouse, the Apostles and Martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen. Let's pray together now in the very words that the Lord Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's take a moment now to offer those around us, wherever we are, a sign of God's peace. If you're alone, simply just pray for peace at this time. And we pray, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are we who are called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Body and blood of Christ, bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defined spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.